Hello again and welcome. Well here he is, the Nano Gobi. He's decided to come front and centre for a change. Beautiful little thing. Bright blue, top of the eyes. Lovely yellow stripe, translucent body. And the Gobi, bless him, the big Gobi. He's making yet another hope. <laughs> we'll have a look at him later. But uh, since the, the Nano Gobi is so reclusive, it's really nice to see him coming out here. I thought uh, we'd take a shot. We also wanted to just show you um, that one of the hermit crabs has moved out of one shell and now into another. So it'll be easier to see now because he's gone into a, a quite a bright white shell, which is nice. I will try and move the camera over in a minute so we can see that, but let's just, you can just see this Nano Gobi just sits, doesn't move, he just sits. go out of an evening, he closes up to become a little ball. This got me a more And he's the same. Pretty well stays like that all the time. And there we go, that white shell there has a hermit crab in it. Let's just put this back into here so that you can see the Gobi. And he's still <laughs> the water's just a little bit cloudy. Let's see if we can see all those bits in there, that is purely down to the goby excavating his potential using Nemo. He's very busy again. The flame scooter seems to be pecking at the, the sand bed a lot, which is great because it is a light sand bed, so I make an assumption. Water's just a little bit cloudy. Let's see if we can look at that. You can see all those bits in there. That is purely down to the Gobi excavating its potential for using Nemo. He's very busy again. The flame scooter seems to be pecking at the, the sand bed a lot, which is great because it is a light sand bed, so I'm making an assumption that um, he is eating. He didn't want to eat any of the mices I put in this morning. Again, <laughs> it's quite interesting because I put the pipette right up to him and he just didn't move and he wasn't interested in the food at all, so one can only assume that he is actually eating. But he did eat some yesterday, and if he doesn't want to eat today, then assumption that he's been finding something to eat and could very well be eating the copy pods and if he can catch them great. I'm going to get some more copy pods at the weekend again when I ask the chap in the fish shop to get the pajama ass for me. I noted to him that he didn't have any live food in at all and uh, he said he was going to get some in so I said well I'm looking to get quite a few copy pods uh, and he understands obviously because I've got these. So that's good. This orange fungia is just lovely and it's these tentacles coming out now. Well, when we first saw it in the fish shop, the tentacles weren't out at all and it had been in. 
in the fish shop for a little while. We've seen it a couple of times, but it seems to like it in here. Like that green one. Trachecilia. Opening up more. That's probably about as far as it's going to go, I think, because it closes up at the night time a little bit. like it's been there quite a lot today on and off. interesting to look at than watching a fish just swim backwards and forwards. Although on my fish list I still want um, a Midas Blenny. I've got a fish shop, my local fish shop, looking out for one of those for me. said it's going to take a couple of weeks and they don't seem to get anywhere near as many as they did um, in the trade now. So maybe the price will go up on those but I would very much like to get a Midas Blenny. And um, probably a one spot box face which will, will fit into this tank and a cold yellow eye tang. And looking at him, the more I look at him, the coloration on him is just utterly gorgeous, he really is. Just unfortunately so tiny and will remain small. Bubble scrubbing's just starting for today. That'll be an hour and a half now, just starting. Definitely improving the water quality, definitely improving it. Very, very happy with that. So again, uh, shout out to Reef Girl for that one, RWF, GWRL. I was watching. I watched a couple of other YouTubers that tried bubble scrubbing, but they didn't seem to follow up or go into it in great detail, whereas Reefgill did. And it's helpful to see, it's helpful to know, and then get follow up. This does not in any way, shape, or form appear to be harming anything in the tank. And even the, uh, I say, the peppermint shrimp comes out. <laughs> Sometimes and actually bathes in the stuff. All the other fish just effectively ignore it and swim through it, do whatever they want to do, no issues at all. But the corals definitely like it. So it's a win win situation. Turn pump forward just a fraction so we can get more bubbles. Yes, they're doing the job. Again, there's absolutely no sign of the cobweb. Uh, Dinoplacates, whatever they're called, dinos, dinos. have got on the very top of the USS Star, uh, Starship Enterprise where the the pyres are or sorry the clothes um, there is three or are three spots of what looks like red either red slime algae or red algae which I believe actually came on the, the fire tried cleaning it off at the time didn't want to come off seemed on whatever it was so I left it either rightly or wrongly and there are some very light pink patches up there which I will 
use the either the turkey baster or the the long i've got a, a sort of a just over two feet long pipette which um, i can use to squirt and that gets right down to the bottom of the pipette uh, and allows me to feed the, the scooter so there we have it that's another nice one beautiful beautiful little fish it's just still there Not in the slightest bit worried about the few bubbles that are coming over to him at all. Just chill. If you have watched this far, thank you for taking an interest. I hope it's been useful, helpful and entertaining. But if it hasn't, with any frustrations, hit the dislike button. Bang bang. If you do like it, please like and subscribe if you so wish. And I'll see you on the next one.